Welcome to Bed and Butter, the hospitality podcast designed exclusively for budding students and aspiring industry leaders. We're thrilled to embark on this exciting journey with you. Each episode, we'll delve into the heart of hospitality industry with your host, Sean Riley, uncovering invaluable insights, trends, and strategies to not only succeed, but thrive in this dynamic field. The podcast is produced in collaboration with Southern Maine Community College. Listen to national leaders highlight opportunities for the active hospitality professional, students of SMCC's culinary arts program, as well as the L. Joe Van Wy School of Hospitality. This program is a labor of love, made possible with the help of the communications and new media studies students. Whether you're sharpening your skills or stepping into the world of hospitality for the first time, bed and butter is your go-to resource. So let's dive in and spread the knowledge one episode at a time. Hey listeners, have we got a treat for you today. Ginny Petrovic has the title of Chief Enthusiast. There's a reason why and you'll see soon. This dynamic hotel general manager became inspired to join the hotel industry and followed her dreams, but she did it at a real young age. She worked summer jobs and did internships, went to hospitality school and did a management training program at a five-star resort. But she loved Maine and came back to build her career in her favorite state. She's currently the general manager of the Canopy by Hilton in Portland. It's truly a lifestyle brand, and we'll hear more about that. Let's have some fun as she inspires us. Well, welcome, Jenny. Thanks, Sean. <laughs> well, it's, re- it's really cool to have you here. You're inspiration for a lot of people. And I, I know well, through the introduction, you're, you're called a general manager, but I, I know that's an inappropriate title. You are the chief enthusiast <laughs> that's of right. your hotel. Mm-hmm. Tell me about that. What's that all about? <laughs> I know. Canopy is such a fun, energetic, I say young-hearted type of brand. And the ethos of their employee culture is that every associate is actually an enthusiast. So as the general manager, I get the fun title of being the chief enthusiast, um, which I think is great. It kind of gives me uh, something to remind myself of every day to really come in and show up as that cheerleader for my team and for my property. So I'm all about the chief enthusiast title, but I do have to explain it to others in the industry that, yes, I am the general manager. I just have a better title. Well, actually, I some people call me the chief um, inspirational officer. Yes. So I'm on the same same wave, same wavelength. I love that. But, but it's not a brand thing. It's not a company thing. <laughs> well, thanks. I really appreciate you being here. And just for the for the audience to know, she's beaming and smiling. She's like <laughs> excited to be here. She's going to have a lot of fun. And we're both new at this, and we're just going to have fun. That's we're just right. going to talk and, mm-hmm. and have a good time. And it's, you've got a long career. Yeah. You know, I talk to a lot of people about their careers. And, and a lot of people, one of the guests we've had that um, has been doing this for 25 years. And she would say, well, I started when I was 12 years old. So mm-hmm. that she tried to make money. Mm-hmm. You really mm-hmm. did. You really did start at 12 years old. Tell me about <laughs> that that first thing you did when the, in the business yes. and how that maybe inspired you to go forward. Yeah, of course. I had a job shadow when I was in high school. It's supposed to pick a business, an organization to um, shadow in for about a week's time. And I, I just thought of why not a hotel and uh, shadowed the general manager at the Portland Harbor Hotel actually here in Portland. And I just had the best time, went to all these different meetings, talked to all these different people, saw how active and vibrant uh, working in a hotel could be, and that every day, almost every hour, was something different. And that's not for everyone, but that was so for me. I I knew I didn't want to be behind a desk. I wanted to be with people, working with people, and I guess inevitably working for people and providing people with a great experience that really hit home for me immediately. That's amazing. 12 years old. (laughs) I mean, that's inspirational for anybody, but especially someone who's 12 year old. It was great. And and from there, I just decided, hey, I'm going to go to college. I'm going to declare my major as hospitality. Let's just jump right in and see where it takes me. I am so glad that I made that decision and haven't really looked back since. Well, that is cool. Now, you started with part-time jobs. Mm -hmm. It led you to where you are today. And that's just amazing. You know, I think that maybe it was a dream that you had. And I think that's kind of cool that you followed a dream. Mm-hmm. I mean, in Pink, the song, you know, the, one of the songs Pink that is, I don't care, I don't care, so call me crazy. We can live in a world that we design. And it's almost like you designed that at 12 years old. <laughs> yeah, I, I really felt at the time that 
a hotel life was it for me. And I went in super naively in a way because I had never had experience, obviously, in the industry or work in a hotel for at that moment. I just thought how fun and interesting it seemed. And I was like, all right, I'm going to jump two feet in and give it a whirl. And I think I came in with the attitude that I want to learn as much as I can from all different departments, different areas of the business, learn from different people, and just have fun at the end of the day. That's still really important to me, even in my role now, is just enjoy what I'm doing every single day and find like the light and bright parts of hospitality. And that's really just helped me succeed, I think, in the industry and want to be in it for years and years to come. I think that's awesome. So your career led you. So you went yeah. from seventh grade <laughs> Through um, through college, and then you joined some really top-notch yeah. hotel companies. Yeah, I was really fortunate. I had a great internship when I was in college for Vail Resorts. and That's one of the biggies out there, right? Yeah, I mean, the, is. it is. And at the time, I, I was fortunate because they were just really fo- starting to focus on their hospitality division of the company, and they had this management training program, which when I was in, in college, it was like, get into Marriott's training program or Starwoods, and Vail Resorts was one that was newer. Um, and it was two years. I spent nine months in Vail, a season outside of Jackson Hole, and then I went to Breckenridge. But I went, had all different disciplines, different departments, but jumped in right away to a more uh, of a leadership role. So immediately were, was supervising people, which was, uh, you know, as a, at the time, 21, 22-year-old outside of college, that, that can be hard. Mm-hmm. Um, but it definitely taught me a lot. And And I was fortunate to have some great mentors, too, who really shaped my path for me before I even knew what that path looked like. So that was great. I I did a little food and beverage, definitely found out that that's not my jam. I don't tell me to carry a tray because it'll just be embarrassing. But that don't remember how many which one was a coffee, which one was a tea. (laughs) I know. I just that's that's just like, oh, my gosh, my brain doesn't think like those professionals. I just can't do it. But I really enjoy that experience because it was so much about managing people and the dynamics of that uh, food and beverage is just, oh my gosh, it's all day long. I I worked 5 a.m. to 5 p.m. banquets, restaurants, in-room dining. It, it It was amazing. It was a good like first job out of college, but I knew I wanted to get back to the front desk, um, and that's really what I did when I was outside of Jackson Hole and then um, following my my mentor to Breckenridge, and that was most of my experience in the high school and in college um, was more of the rooms, hotel, ops side of things. So I knew I wanted to focus primarily on that. Um, but it certainly gives you appreciation for what they do. Oh, my gosh, without a doubt. <laughs> and I'm so fortunate to work alongside incredible food and beverage professionals who they know what they're doing and they know how to operate. But I know a couple things from my experience that at least I can chime in here and there. Certainly, you know, let them do their thing. And I'm, I'm better suited in, in the other side of hotel ops on the room side. Well, that's awesome. So, yeah. you know, I'm sure there's a lot of people through that career, both in mm-hmm. Breckenridge and Vail and Portland, Maine. I mean, that were, that impacted your life. Mm-hmm. Who might that be and what did they teach you that yes. you use today even? Yeah, I I think of my, my first real um, manager who at the time was a director of rooms when I was um, outside of Jackson Hole in the Grand Teton National Park. And then I followed him down to Breckenridge when he became a GM. And I think the biggest takeaways I, I felt from him was he was always cool, calm, and collected, (laughs) even under pressure. Uh, Even in the most stressful of times, he kept that positive attitude and always stayed true to, we're going to find a resolution. Um, We're going to get through this. And in such a way that just as an associate, you you felt safe, you felt taken care of, you felt supported. Um, And I I definitely appreciated that as, as young as I was in my career. He definitely taught me a lot. And and those practices I've, I've really kept with me. He was also good at work-life balance, which I think as a young professional in hospitality, you think, oh, I need to work 12, 14 hours a day and put in all this extra time. And he was so against that. He was so regimented to have a work-life balance with his family. I can still remember a time he like unplugged my computer and made me walk out the door with him. <laughs> <laughs> I still tell that story um, because it was so impactful. And it was like, that can wait till tomorrow. You don't have to get everything done in one 
day. Um, th- that in a way has helped me to understand how to prioritize everything that's necessary, especially in a GM role. There's You always have a to-do list. There's always something that can be done or um, something that's on your plate that you want to cross off. But I think focusing always on my team and then our guests and the other things, you'll get to them. You'll get to them eventually. They'll live on that list. It's not that everything has to get done in one day. Um, and you have to be able to just really manage your time um, appropriately and effectively. So. Yeah, and I think you talk about balance. It's balance, yeah. but it's also kind of an infusion. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like melding the two together. Definitely. Um, and, and I wish you were a mentor to me back when I had, <laughs> when I was younger and had kids. But in my life right now with my grandkids, I'm all over that. Right. So it's just taking me a lot longer than it took you. But yes. I think, um, thank you. <laughs> You should thank your advisor, mm-hmm. your mentor back in those days. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that's that's a great thing for a lot of people think this business, you have to do it. And you do yeah. have to work hard. And there are crazy hours. Yes. yes. But you've got to figure that out and plan for it. Yes, and I know. It's like find that balance and uh, still maintain your, your priorities. And maybe one week your priorities are a little out of skew and they're, they're not able to maybe prioritize your family as much. But then you make sure that you prioritize that on a day or a time where you can. I just yesterday needed to pop out of work because it was my daughter's like final uh, celebration for her kindergarten class. So yes, I left work at 1.30 so I could pop down and do that with her. But then I know, okay, maybe the next day I'm staying an extra hour late because I didn't catch up on everything I wanted to. So it's a balance. And I, I think that's something within hospitality that's important to tell the next generation that, hey, yes, it's a 300 65 day a year type of industry but you can still have a family you can still have those goals in your life as well that balance is possible but protect it and make it happen for yourself too one other thing you think you mentioned to me in, in the discussion about your, your that mentor yes is that he said you make make sure your staff is okay yes always i i think always ensure that you're connecting with your people. Um, I am very regimented at doing one-on-one meetings with all of my department managers. I make it a point to float through the operation at least two to three times a day just to check in on our line level associates. And for me at the canopy, I got to make sure I don't forget about Luna up at the top, (laughs) take that elevator ride before I leave home, make sure everyone's doing well up there and just show face. And that's I thought you meant you want to shut the windows up before. <laughs> yeah. But that's when, you know, you can have those special moments to just connect with with all your staff, I think is so critical. I think that's awesome. And you've got to you find a way to do that. Yeah. Yep. You know, you've got to get to people and it's a one on one. And I think the listeners are either students or mm-hmm. up and coming professionals in, yep. in the business. And I think to hear you say that is that you've got to make sure you take care of the associates. And yep. if you don't take care of the associates, they're not going to take care of the guests and the guests aren't going to come back. Exactly. I'm I'm a huge advocate of you take care of your people and then your people will take care of the guests. Mm-hmm. And and that just, that kind of cycle it can be really magical for the operation. Um, so big proponent of that. So I, I just get back from a Hilton Advisory Council yeah. meeting that I sit on in, is out in Dallas. And one of the things I kept talking about was getting back to the basics mm. of service. Mm-hmm. And it's not brain science. No. You know, it's you've got to do things and it's just get back to the, you know, they want a clean bed. They want friendly people. Yep. I mean, Kristen said his big thing is friendly people. Yep. In service. Those mm-hmm. are the two things. Right. When's the last time maybe you made a bed? Oh, my gosh. Uh, not as long ago as you think. Maybe a couple of weeks ago. I'm a, a, an efficient bed maker. We, oh. I actually, uh, I think of our housekeeping week celebration we did last September and we all made beds in different rooms throughout the floor. And then everyone went around and like ranked who had the best bed. And I would like to say I came in the top three of the team because I, I make a tight bed. <laughs> wow, good for you. That's, that's it. We we did that years ago. And I had a president at the time, a president of my company and a CFO. And um, so we kind of pulled a prank on a CFO. So we went in the room. We did this in front of all, <laughs> all the people. And, and we gave him a twin, a double sheet for a queen bed. Ooh. And we gave him a king blanket. Mean. The, and he's trying to straighten that out. He's running around. Everybody's dying laughing. He can't figure out why the bed thing. <laughs> not minute. so so um he, and, I, and when we did though i did beat everybody else on the bed that was years ago though I yes think. that was back when we had shiny bed spreads and just covered up everything so that's amazing <laughs> but, no uh, i i'm always like <clears throat> a roll up your sleeves kind of leader i think that's important i push that with all of my department managers too like you can't be sitting in your office you need to be with your people with your staff seeing what they're going through even that, if it's symbolic yes you go and make a bed with someone talk to them oh. i mean you talk
talking to them, yep. hearing them, and you're making a bed that has an accomplishment. Absolutely. You you did some you opened a couple of hotels. Yes. And now that's like <laughs> roll up your sleeves, you're in it. Oh yeah. Oh my gosh. And I, I'm one of those crazy people who love a hotel opening. I think uh, my first opening uh was at the press hotel. That experience I, I'm such a task list organized kind of person, set myself up day in and day out. And in an opening, you might have a plan when you walk through the door and twenty minutes later you're like, Nope, I'm gonna rip that plan up and we're going to pivot to this plan or that plan. I can remember just so many instances where... The truck shows up at 4.30 after (laughs) everybody just left. I know. You're having a manager's meeting. You guys unload the truck. Yes. I think I had a day where all of our pillows and comforters are like coffee machines for our guest rooms and all of our cleaning supplies showed up (laughs) at the same time. And I thought I had this like great checklist of what we were going to do throughout the day. And then something like that happens and you just... You got to be able to pivot and pivot in a positive, this is not stressful kind of way. Like this is fun. This is exciting. This is a challenge. And and so I think that's what really helped me to enjoy an opening, uh, not thinking of it as so overwhelming, um, but as a way to just really strengthen my decision making and work with a team to to get them in that mindset uh, was really exciting. So when it was time for the canopy, I was like, throw, throw me in. I'm so ready. You, so you were a rooms division manager yes. at the press. Yep. In Portland. I was. Mm-hmm. That's, an, that's an autograph Marriott. Mm-hmm. And then now you're with the Hilton Canopy. Yes. Do you see a difference in the two companies, per se? Not the brands, because those are different brands. That's always different. But in how they do things? I... I do. I think Hilton has a huge emphasis on the employee culture and just the associate base and the focus on making sure there's proper recognition, training programs and development. I think Hilton puts a huge focus on that, which I've I've really enjoyed. And they make it systematic as well. They make it easy for you to do that. Yes, they have this great thrive at Hilton, uh, which gives you all these ideas for employee recognition. We're right in the middle of team member appreciation right. week uh, so we have we, we're doing some celebrating tomorrow as a crew uh, but I, I love how much of a focus they put on team members that's just in my heart uh, by nature so it's it's fun to work with an, within a larger enterprise that really focuses on that too and it's interesting that you're the enthusiast yes and <laughs> I think that, that that kind of says that brand in and of itself I think shows and it's a young brand yes mm-hmm. <clears throat> and it's for younger people mm-hmm. um, but it's um, and it's the lifestyle yes the sexy brand I think for, for, for exactly Hilton. exactly um, well that's great and I, I think that's um, something that m- melds but I think you can probably mm-hmm. you probably turn to a Marriott you could do the same thing absolutely because you've learned from as you've gone through your career you've now done Vail and that group yep you've done Marriott and you've done Hilton yep what's next what's left in the world you, <laughs> I, I where do you go from here you've done I all. know well I think through my career I've learned that different hotel brands like an autograph or a canopy ones more in the lifestyle luxury segment really speak to me because there's more flexibility in the way that guest enhancement can be created. That was one of the reasons why I jumped to the Press Hotel because it was such an opportunity to tell the story of this beautiful building and like bring this service culture to life that no one really had a blueprint for and we were kind of making up as we went and it was so just amazing to be part of and something I'm super proud of to to this day. Uh, And then with the Canopy, they have have great programming and, and standards with within the brand, but there's still so much flexibility mm-hmm. to how you interpret it and really bring it to life for guests and, and for your team members. So I like that flexibility. I, I don't think I, I could be at a, a select service type of property, but I think it's important as individuals jump into the hospitality world that they find their niche and they find what really makes them sing in, in in hospitality and that's different for everyone so I think that's just important to recognize for yourself as you jump into this crazy hotel life world <laughs> so you've obviously reached a high level of success I think that's a it's an accomplishment for Thank a young you. person to come mm-hmm. into the, the world and older than 12 yes yes <clears throat> but um, <laughs> that's your old compared to that you've doubled your age in the business already you've done that so what is success to you what do you see mm-hmm. as success you know as soon as I jumped into hospitality I knew I wanted to be a general manager I was like that has got to be the coolest job like I gotta get to that place and I'm super proud that 
I was able to achieve that goal. But now in this role, it's taken on a different meaning for me. I, I, kind of sitting down with you right now, I do feel that I'm responsible for getting the next generation of hoteliers and hospitality professionals excited to be part of this industry and know that work-life balance is possible and that you you can take a weekend off every once in a while and you can have a life outside of just work, 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 day in and day out. So I think success to me is being able to take a Saturday, Sunday off, (laughs) being able to like go home. Even yesterday, my property, we had buyout in our rooftop bar. We had a huge celebration in our lower restaurant and a big dinner in all of our meeting rooms. And I left at five o'clock and I said, you guys got it. See you later. And then being able to come back in the next day and just give kudos all around. Like you guys make it look easy and look at our numbers and share success with them. But I think that that's, I, I'm super proud of, of being able to, you know, leave my work at work and have a life outside of work and just mentor the people around me to achieve their su- level of success, too. Well, I think you're, you're a great a success is being able to share your life and yeah. share things that can help others. And I think um, you're doing that. You're doing that today. Yeah. And, and, you know, and a lot of our listeners are, are younger than, mm-hmm. than me, for sure. <laughs> and they're probably older than 12 years. Okay, maybe, maybe the kids are 12 years old now. I know. Pro- maybe they listen to the podcast. <laughs> I don't know. <clears throat> but, um, you know, family is something that was important yes. to you. And I think that's great. And I've seen pictures of you. Your mm-hmm. six-year-old daughter on Facebook, mm-hmm. and, and um, you know, I think that's a that's a real cool thing. So, how about being a mom and a leader? Yes. How, how I mean, I know a mom and a dad. I mean, doesn't have to be a mom. You happen to be a mom, mm-hmm. but I mean, me as a dad. How, how do you make that work? I know. I I think it comes back to the balance and prioritizing, and also sharing. For for me, I share a lot of my success and the hotel and the joy that I get from my work with my daughter and I'm always super proud to bring her into the hotel and show her around and I love that she talks about oh yeah I'm going to mommy's hotel and like that just gives me such joy that she's even proud of me but she she understands too when I might say hey I gotta swing by the hotel tomorrow before we maybe do xyz together and she's always so excited about that and and she understands how important it is to me, but uh, she's priority number one, of course. <laughs> and when you incorporate her into that, it makes it better too. Yes. That's cool. I know. I actually, um, about a year into the canopy, my experience at the canopy, I, I wrote a book. I wrote this book called Cora at the Canopy. Have you ever read Eloise at the Plaza? No. Okay, so Eloise at the Plaza is about this little girl who lives in the Plaza Hotel in New York City and gets into all this mischief and et cetera. That's cute. They have a couple of different storybooks. So I was like, I'm going to write a little book about Cora at the Canopy and all oh. of her adventures around the hotel. And Is it published? Well, not published, but I wrote it. I had a woman who um, is actually a local artist and author. She did all the il- illustrations for me, mm-hmm. and we give it out at Canopy to little kids that oh, we see on property. Oh, have to get a room so I can get a copy. <laughs> yes, oh, my exactly. My granddaughter's name's Fiona. We're going to do Fiona oh. at the Fairfield. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> yes. Oh, my gosh. Yes. Spread the word. That's so, really cool. So, yeah. We were in. I'd like to share that Shruti Buckley, who is the brand VP for Global Head for Hampton. Yeah. Um, I said it with her. Her daughter's name is Fiona. Oh, my gosh. And so she sends me Fiona the hippo stuff. <laughs> Cute. <clears throat> but um, I, I think that's great. One of the statistics you told me about, which just shocked me and then made me nervous, uh-huh. was mm-hmm. that you're the only po- downtown large hotel GM yeah. That's that's a female. Mm-hmm. And how did you break through that? <laughs> I know. I feel very fortunate to work with a, a, a smaller management company, really be part of a culture and a team that just promotes hard work and uh, results and compassion towards our people. I put in a, a good amount of time and effort into the press hotel, but I knew that, hey, after six years, you kind of get that itch for like a new hotel experience. And I was like, hey, I want to want to be part of the canopy. I, I believe in the brand and I want an opening and just let me have it. And, and it was kind of at first like a, a almost trial run of, of great we're gonna put you on the opening um, we're gonna have you get get everything organized and you know we'll see if if that GM role you're you're ready for and don't don't give me a challenge because <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna blow this out of the water so well, it's cool. you I know it's great I was gonna say you know can you give advice and I think you, I heard two things this one throw your name in a hat yeah yeah and then go after it as hard as you can absolutely and I think that's that's a great thing when I when you told me that I went home got a lot of padded we have 24 hotels so I went through okay 
Male, male. Female, female. I went through the whole thing. Wow. So we came out 14 women and eight men. Oh so I felt gosh. better. Phew. That's... Now, but you know what? I didn't even know. Yeah. Because we chose the best people at the time for that job. Yes. And I, and I would I guarantee that Jim Brady and, and Jonathan and those folks did not give you the job because you're female. You just happened to be a female who was the best candidate. Uh, right. I... And I think that's a cool thing. But I think it, it, it was surprising to look at Portland. But, but yeah. I did. I went back and <laughs> checked my math. I'm like, okay, we're okay. Because I don't think that way. Right. Right. But I think, the like you said, the message is there that, hey, hard work, put your name out there don't don't be afraid of a challenge and see how you can rise to that and you might not know the answers to everything but be humble about that in a way I think I learned through my transition was no I, I, I don't know everything I've never done this before I've never been a GM but I'm gonna find the answers out I'm gonna use my resources and have a great team around me to to collaborate with and be successful with no well, I think that same meant mantra could go for a man absolutely but it could go for a 21 year old person mm-hmm. out of college you did that mm-hmm. too mm-hmm. and it wasn't because you're a woman you got that job because you were and you were nervous about being 21 and doing that job right uh, i was a leader at a young age and you know got all kinds of people older being yeah. having to listen to you so, i know so i think by you by you rolling in yeah. get rolling your sleeves up and caring about the people made the difference so yeah. I, I commend you for that mm-hmm. and i commend your company for putting you in that thank that, you they probably don't even know they're the only one, you're the only one so. <laughs> i know probably not <laughs> um I've been in the business for f- over 40 years, so that's been a while. Mm-hmm. And again, I didn't start at 12. <laughs> but we've all gone through things. There's crazy times, fun mm. things, things that go on, and mm-hmm. funny stories. And without throwing a guest under the bus or a hotel under the bus, but give me a, a funny story that you'd like to share. Oh, gosh. Well, I think of some experiences we've had at the at the canopy even last summer. Commercial Street, the, all of the properties there it can be crazy during a torrential downpour. And mm. we had a couple, two days within three months of of each other where certain parts of the property flooded and of course you're getting a flood in August when you're completely sold out and you're managing that chaos with your team and that was it teaches you a lot about rolling up your sleeves getting the job done being resilient staying positive and that I always think about hey the the day starts and then it ends and then the next day is a totally different day. It's a totally new day. Unless you're still flooded. <laughs> Unless you're still flooded. For us, luckily, it was maybe 48 hours. So that was, you know, a challenging time, but something I'll I'll never forget, just seeing how resilient and uh, the ability for my team to really come together and support each other and handle such a challenging situation with a smile and with positivity and that, hey, we're going to get through it and, and on we go. So I definitely have a lot of those stories. And uh, but I've had such amazing guest experience stories as well. I, I've worked in some really interesting areas and been exposed to lots of different kind of guests, uh, celebrities, athletes. Uh, and that's been such a whirlwind to be a part of. I actually told this story to my team in our ops meeting today because we were, we were talking about above and beyond guest experience. And I had this family in Breckenridge that had stayed with me. I was there for four years and they came came back um, really every season and the last season that I was there their boys were then like seven and nine something like that and I I told their father I I was like I have a kind of going away gift for your boys because I'm not going to see you next winter because I'll be back in Maine and we took them on a cat ride like up the mountain in Breckenridge I worked with Breckenridge Ski Resort got them to come pick these two boys up take them out the mountain like at you know eight nine o'clock at night and just see the whole operation on the mountain and just like blew their minds but it's something I'll always remember and it's also a guest that I'm still in contact with to this day I I think those are some of the stories and the memories that being in this industry can create you can create those for for yourself too selfishly that that's something that brings me great joy but I was also able to share that with some strangers that yeah. became friends and family um, th- throughout the several years that I knew them so I think that's such a rewarding part of this industry um, and it's and nice that, that your team has a person to inspire them to do that. yeah and, and that, that enthusiast and I think yeah. that's too all all too often we can make these things do them as 
stuff sell. Right. But if you don't share and talk about it, and that's, you know, here's your bully pulpit here. Yeah. You know, you can tell people you can do that stuff, and you oh. should because it comes back. Mm -hmm. And it's not just because you want to make more money. No. And now that may be a byproduct. Right. But you're doing that because it's the right thing to do. You're going to change a life. You're going to impact someone. And yeah. I always go back to impacting people. And it, I think mm -hmm. you did. You impacted these people, and they're going to remember you for life. Mm -hmm. and, and now you've impacted thousands of people listening to this podcast. Yes. So I, you've taken it. I heard from someone that, you know, it's not one size fits all. It's one size fits one. And that, like, really resonated with me to slow down, be present, listen to your guests, find what makes them tick and curate an experience that's specific to them. A anyone can deliver champagne to a room or a dozen roses, but I am much more of the the person and the leader that just encourages like peel that onion back just like one more and find out something super special about a guest and use that to your advantage to really curate an experience for them and that'll resonate more than uh, just complimentary breakfast in the morning or you know glass of wine at night uh, do something that really ticks and and makes them remember you and remember their experience well i was going to ask you to close this out with something <laughs> really special and i, I don't think i <laughs> have to now i mean that is just that that you should you should write another book yes not just for kids but one for for all of us in this business that that is so inspiring and you're an enthusiast for me and i thanks and i'll tell the audience i haven't seen Ginny's canopy and i'm going to leave here now yes. and i'm going to go down to look at her hotel and this is great thank you for thank um, you for coming on this program with, you know, this is an SMCC studio and all the students here are putting it together, different apartments. And mm -hmm. I really appreciate it. And they will. But it's also impacting people out of the industry. And uh, this might not be the last time I call you. <laughs> I know. Thanks, Sean. No, I'm so, uh, such a pleasure to be here. Such an honor and excited for the next generation of hospitality pros to come. So glad to be here. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you for joining us for another episode of Bed and Butter, the hospitality podcast produced in partnership with Southern Maine Community College. Make sure you're subscribed to the podcast so that you don't miss any episodes and have a butterful day.